Hi friends, this is Rushi from GVO. In the next couple of weeks, GVO and a number of other companies will start their graduate recruitment process. Over the last four years, we've been privileged to speak with hundreds of young engineers as they start their journey in software development. Today, I wanted to talk about resumes. Over my career of about 20 years, I have screened thousands of resumes and I have seen a number of different patterns. So let's talk about how to make your resume stand out and how to avoid some very obvious mistakes. Number one, make sure that your resume does not include any obvious spelling or grammatical errors. This can be done very simply by making sure that you put your resume through Google Documents or Microsoft Word and resolve any issues that are thrown up by the spelling or grammar checker. Number two, if you put a GitHub link in your resume, make sure that there is something interesting to see there. I've seen a number of GitHub profiles which just include a forked open source repository or indeed are empty. Anything that you include in your resume, you should expect the screener to want to find out more. So if you include a GitHub profile, make sure it includes work that you've done and work that you're proud of showcasing to the world. Number three, a number of applicants include their Code Chef and Hacker Rank scores. Now, some of these competitive programming platforms really push folks to do impressive programming exercises. But in isolation, a Code Chef or Hacker Rank score doesn't really tell us anything. So if you're proud of a submission uh, or of your performance in a particular competition, include a couple of lines about what you did and how you ranked compared to your peers. Number four, we have seen a number of resumes that follow the same format. It is clear that you've taken a template and you've added uh, some text and you've sent it out as your resume. There is nothing wrong with that. You need to make sure that your resume looks professional. However, it is also important that the content of your resume also stands out. So make sure that if you're using a template or you're using a friend's resume as inspiration, that you remove any template text and replace it with text that truly belongs to you. Make sure that the content stands out because that is really what matters. A number of students also include hobbies. Unfortunately, often these hobbies are things like reading or running or traveling. They don't really tell us anything. If you're proud and passionate about a hobby, think about how that could make you stand out. If you are passionate about reading, maybe share a link to a book review you might have written. If you are passionate about the performing arts, maybe share a link to a video. Remember, you have a little bit of time in order to truly stand out. If you want to include a hobby, think about what makes you different. Finally, I would strongly encourage everyone to think about creating a personal website. A resume is static. It is a document that you send off. You cannot change it. But a website is dynamic. You don't need to, to have your own domain or create a particularly fancy website. Even a Medium blog or a GitHub page, which can act as a living resume, would be a good first step. In this day and age, it is important for you to secure your web presence. So consider having an online presence by creating a personal blog. If you're on LinkedIn, make sure you add some content which showcases your interests and your skills. Having a personal website would be really, really important. So friends, that's it from me today. We look forward to speaking to, uh, to you as we start our graduate recruitment process for 2022. But I wish you all the best and uh, thank you very much.